Hi, I'm Jeff Stokes. Welcome to Jeff's Daily Dose of Encouragement. Today, I want to encourage you to slay your sacred cows. <clears throat> I think you may know what I mean by sacred cows. Those things that you hold dear that aren't really of the Lord or aren't really true or aren't really <clears throat> are right. Some examples of those things are... I'll give three examples of things, particularly in the church, that I believe are sacred cows <clears throat> that are treated as inviolable and not to be touched or removed. One of them is tithing. There seems to be a belief generally amongst Christians that tithing is biblical. Well, it's very clear that it's in the Bible but it's also very clear that it's under the law of Moses and also in order to tithe you have to fulfill quite a lot of conditions and one of them is that you have to actually live in Israel to do it and if you look in the New Testament you'll find that tithing is not taught and you can't include the Gospels because the Gospels Jesus was still under the law when he taught the Pharisees about that. But in the New Testament, it's about the giving. And it says that Paul's taught that people should just give as they purpose in their heart. Not begrudgingly, but willingly. Not because they have to, but because they want to. And because God has put it on their heart to. Now you can give 10%, you can give 50%, you can give 5%. Whatever the Lord lays on your heart is right for you. So that's sacred cow number one. And I believe that the reason mostly why, and it's mostly leaders that try and teach tithing, is so that they can receive a stipend. But the guise is given that all. If you do, you'll be blessed and God will open the windows of heaven. Well, I can tell you that I don't tithe and God blesses me quite well. Thank you very much. So that's sacred cow number one I'm going to deal with. The next one is a good example, is the way that church is conducted. Now, in our modern days, and it's been going on for a long, long time now, and I think most of it descends from Roman Catholicism, and the structures that they have, the hierarchical structure, is that we have one man at the top, and when we do church, we have some songs, and then we might have some notices, then we might have more songs, and then we have a sermon, and then we have a cup of tea afterwards, and we go home. Now, you will not find that model of church in the New Testament of the Bible, but yet we persist in holding that up as the only way that we can do church and oftentimes it actually limits or completely shuts out the Holy Spirit leading the members in the body of what he wants to do and how he wants to minister amongst the people and the third thing that I want to bring out is is to do more with beliefs I guess the first one was beliefs as well but this is to do with the belief. There's a common saying amongst Christians that, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Or they'll say, oh, I'm a sinner. Well, if you're a sinner and you're still a sinner, why did Jesus die? Jesus died so that he could set you apart so you could be set apart to God, which is what holiness means. It means when you're set apart, you're sanctified, which is what a saint is. It's a sanctified one. You're set apart, and then the Holy Spirit begins the process of making you holy and righteous by following his Spirit. And when you were a sinner, you didn't have that going on in your life because the Holy Spirit wasn't there. But once the Holy Spirit comes into you, you become a new creature. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. It doesn't mean to say 
that you don't make mistakes and that you're not human. And if you sin, sin is actually going against the direct known will of God. And if you know that something's not right or you know the Lord's telling you to do something, you go against it, then you've sinned. But if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sin and, and to cleanse you from all, all unrighteousness, which means there's no sin there once you confess it. So you're not a sinner anymore. People confuse their experience, especially as younger Christians are struggling in their walk and, and growing up in the Lord, that they sin sometimes and then they get it right sometimes. So they think that they're a sinner and a saint. Well, you're not. You're actually a saint. You're a sanctified one. You are set apart to God. And he is continually working in that space in your in your heart to get you to walk in it consistently. So there's my encouragement for you today. I just want to read to you a verse from what God spoke to Moses to speak to Israel concerning this issue of what I call sacred cows. It's put in different terms here, but and it's actually in the Old Testament, but we can apply the principle today. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 2 to 3, and it says, You shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which you shall possess served their gods upon the high mountains, and upon the hills and under every green tree. And you shall overthrow all their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And you shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. And that's what we need to do in our own lives. We need to absolutely get rid of the things that the world holds dear, the things that religion holds dear, the things that we've been taught for years but they don't actually line up with scripture. We need to slay those sacred cows. We need to pull down those lies because we are not in a religion that does the same thing all the time. We belong to a living God who speaks to us and tells us to do this this time and then he might want to do this differently another time and then do this on another day and that on another day. It doesn't mean to say we don't have regularity and discipline and uh, regular things in our lives but it's not led by the fact that we have these sacred things that are not allowed to be moved. It's led by the Holy Spirit. So God bless you. Have a great day. My encouragement for you today is slay your sacred cows. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you can just confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you should be saved. For whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you what are the things in your life that you're believing, that you're holding on to, that you're perpetuating, whether it's in your own life or in your church, that are actually not according to his will, that are just man's idea for their own purposes, and they are really just sacred cows. God bless you. Have a great day.